On March 1st, 2000, under the hot sun, a Cessna 414 soared over the vast Kalahari Desert, carrying five passengers. Each passing moment was taking them closer to a perilous fate. Welcome to another video by David Walker. Beneath South Africa's scorching sun, the Kalahari Desert sprawls across 900,000 square kilometers, ranking as Earth's sixth largest desert. Unlike the Sahara, this desert teems with life, hosting 320 diverse wildlife species. To see this wildlife, people from all over the world go for daring desert safari in South Africa. The Kalahari stretches across three countries, with Botswana claiming its largest area. In Botswana's capital, Gaborone, Carl Du Plessis, the head of a courier company, arranged a private plane. He wanted to show breathtaking views of the Kalahari Desert to his friends from the sky. Their destination was Maun, a village 600 kilometers away. The purpose of this journey was an adventure with a business event. Alongside Carl were Mike and Lynette Nikolic, Neb Graurak, and Pilot Costa. Flying above the desert, the plane was moving towards Maun. Viewing the sights of wildlife from the sky, their journey led them deep into the heart of the unforgiving Kalahari, a place with no humans and water. The journey's duration was two hours, but merely an hour in, when they were thinking they were safe in the solitude of the skies, Lynette noticed oil leaking from the plane's wing. She told her husband about it. Upon receiving this information, Pilot Costa shut down one engine from which the oil was leaking. The second engine was still functional, but the scorching heat made the air dry. To sustain aircraft's height, both engines were mandatory to run. Slowly descending plane was increasing pilot's tension. In this terrible situation, pilot called Gaborone Control Tower, but the radio ceased functioning. That was another stroke of bad luck. With no alternative option, the plane had to be landed on a flat surface due to its low altitude. The search for a suitable landing strip had become critical. Only small rocks and bushes were visible below. Survival was the sole priority at that time. So instructing everyone to get into a brace position, the pilot crash landed in the bushes. In those harrowing moments before the crash, their hearts were pounded with fear. They remember, until the very moment they were near the ground, they saw herds of animals running away from their plane. After the plane crashed, as their consciousness slowly returned, they saw billowing smoke and raging flames had surrounded them. Lynette's hand was burned, and Neb Graurak was struggling to breathe due to a chest injury. Working together, they got Neb out of the wrecked plane. They propped him against a tree to help him breathe better. The other three had minor injuries. A few minutes later, the leaking fuel made the whole aircraft burst into flames. It's important to mention that all planes have an emergency transponder to share the location in such worst situations. But when the pilot revealed that the Cessna 414 didn't have this crucial device, everyone was shocked. No one knew where they were anymore. Two injured people needed urgent hospital care to survive. The entire group was praying for the swift arrival of a rescue team. As the day began to fall, they ignited fire from the remnants of the plane to keep hungry beasts away. As the second day dawned, there was no sign of the rescue team anywhere. The five people were getting really weak from not having enough water. Their throats were very dry. In the morning, they drank dew from leaves, but it disappeared when the sun came out. They heard an airplane and hoped it was a rescue team, but it was just a passenger plane flying high up. It was too far away to see them. Everyone was very upset. Executive Director Carl and the pilot had two choices in the dangerous desert. Look for help or wait to die. With no better options, they left their injured friends and went to find help. As the second day ended, Lynette and Neb got sicker at the crash site. The hot daytime made them really thirsty. Meanwhile, even after a whole day of walking, Carl and the pilot found no water. On the second night, a fleeting shower came and went so quickly that the injured individuals at the crash site couldn't collect any water. It had been two days since the plane crash. Carl and the pilot, Costa, kept walking in the desert and bushes to find help. Meanwhile, Neb, dealing with severe dehydration and lung damage, decided to go and find water alone. Fortunately, he discovered rainwater in a tree trunk. It was a small amount, just enough to fill only one glass. Lynette's wound had become infested with worms, 
while Carl and the pilot, Costa, had been walking non-stop for the past four days. Surprisingly, despite their lack of experience in the African wilderness, they hadn't encountered any wild animal looking for prey so far. When the fifth day came to an end, Carl and the pilot saw the roof of a hut in the distance. At first, they weren't sure if it was real or just their imagination, as they had seen things that weren't there before. As they got closer, they found a real hut with a girl inside. They were extremely happy at that time. First, they drank water there and used the radio to tell their control tower about everything that had happened. On the sixth day after the plane crash, when all three friends were almost about to die, the sound of a helicopter approaching gave them a new hope. Finally, the rescue team reached the crash site, and the survivors called it a miracle that happened just before they ran out of breath. Carl and Pilot Costa's decision to leave their friends behind and get help turned out to be a smart choice. Everyone in the accident survived, but two years later, the pilot sadly died in another plane crash. We hope you found our video informative and entertaining. Please show some love and support to us by liking this video and subscribing for more.